Uh, very good afternoon uh, to the uh, to all the people who have logged in for today's session. Uh, I'm Shantala Patel. I will be discussing about cryptographic hash for today. And uh, let me uh, scroll you through the agenda of discussion today. So today I'll be introducing uh, you to the concepts of uh, hash functions, what exactly we mean by a hash and how hash can be applied to cryptography. And then moving on, we will discuss various cryptographic hash properties. In this, we will be discussing basic properties and also we will see how to impose a brute force attack. Moving on further with today's discussion, we will discuss about cryptographic hash construction. In this, we will discuss generic cryptographic hash and also we will take up a case study on secure hash algorithm one so at the end of this session you will be able to explain hashing and its applications to cryptography and also you'll be able to describe various properties of hash moving on you'll also be able to discuss steps involved in the construction of hash i will leave the session with discussion on a case study secure hash algorithm one now to introduce you to the concepts of hash let's take this simple example wherein we have two entities over here over here uh, you can see that the mouse is pointing a lot of uh, names such as Sanjay, Ajay, Vijay, Sonali and so on. And on the end we have alphabets which we refer to as hash buckets. Now for a given data, for a given input Sanjay, uh, let's try to match them to the relevant first alphabet of their particular names. Now Sanjay can be matched to S bucket, S hash bucket. Similarly, Ajay can be mapped to A hash bucket and then Vijay can be mapped to V hash bucket. Sonali can be matched to S hash bucket and so on. Now the number of names could be infinite on this end, but the number of hash buckets on the other end is finite. So over here for this particular example, we can consider that the number of possible buckets will be the number of possible alphabets that is a to z so see 26 buckets are possible on the right hand side so infinite number of input we are mapping it to finite number of hash buckets now the now let's see these points an individual record over here is mapped to one of the 26 hash buckets so given a person's name the output or the hash value is simply the first letter of the name. That is what we specified in the previous um, slide. Uh, S is mapped to uh, S bucket. And then if two names beginning with the same alphabet map to the same hash bucket, then it results in a collision. Now, if you consider the previous example, we see that the names Sanjay and Sonali both st start with the same alphabet. Hence, they both are hashing to the same hash bucket. In such a case, we say that there is a collision that has occurred. Now the question rises as to why we are doing all this. So let us take this particular diagram in understanding why we are using hash functions and the purpose of using hash functions. So over here, we have an input element. The input element could be any file. It could be a document file, or it could be an image, or it could be a it could be a database or anything. This input file is passed on to the hash function. Once it, it's passed on to the hash function algorithm, it is converted to an output file or an output hash. Over here, we can see that in this slide, we can see that the input element is of variable size, whereas the output element is output obtained will always be of fixed size. Now, the function of the uh, the purpose of the hash function is to convert an input of variable size 
into an output of fixed size. Now the output can also be called as hash. The output of a hash function algorithm is also called as hash or it can be called as hash value or it can be called as a message digest. Now, in cryptography, we have various hash algorithms. Now, some of the algorithms that we uh, usually discuss is a secure hash algorithm and the message digest algorithm and many more algorithms still exist. In the secure hash algorithm, we have many flavors of it. Now, some of the flavors are a secure hash algorithm 0, secure hash algorithm 1, and secure hash algorithm 256, and then this is 512, uh, 512 bits. Now, next is message digest. We have three versions of message digest. One is message digest 2 and then message digest 4 and message digest 5. Now we will restrict ourselves to the discussion of secure hash algorithm 1 according to your syllabus. Now let's see the formal definition of a hash function. A hash function is a deterministic function that maps an input element from a larger infinite set to an output element in a much smaller set. As, as I already told, the number of names on the left hand side can be any, that is the hash values that we are mapping, it will always be finite. So the input element is mapped to a hash value. Hash function, as we have seen, hash function does not make use of any keys. So usually hash functions are used to speed up operations like insertion deletion and querying of databases. Now let's ponder about ponder on a few more features of hash. hash function converts arbitrary length input to a fixed length output and this entire process of conversion we call it as hashing of data. Now usually the hash that is obtained is much than the input that is given to it. Hence, hash functions work as uh, compression functions. They reduce the length of the input data or the size of the input data to a fixed size of hash value. And the last one, the last point is, since the hash function converts the larger data into a fixed hash, we also refer to hash as a message digest or a digest. Now speaking on efficiency of operation of hash function, any hash function h with an input of x when we compute h of, h of x, it is a very fast operation as compared to our regular uh, symmetric key encryptions and all. Computationally, hash functions are much faster than that of symmetric encryption. We will see this uh, as we uh, discuss further. We'll uh, discuss this point further. Now, over here in this in this slide, let us try to understand the difference. Over here, in case of encryption, our regular let, I have taken a symmetric key encryption as this particular example. We are providing an input and Along with this input, we need to provide a key to the encryption algorithm. Once the encryption is done, we get what we call it as ciphertext. Now, this output ciphertext, I can reverse it and get back the original plain text. And the process of reversing, we call it as decryption, which takes as input the ciphertext along with the key that was used for encryption as well. Now, once the decryption is performed, we get back the original plain text. Now, this is the process of encryption. Now, let us see the process of hashing. Over here, we have an input that is given, and this input is subjected to hashing process or the hash function. Once we perform the hash, uh, hashing, we get a hash value, and this hash value from this hash value, you can, you can see that this hash value is in terms of alph alphabets and numbers. Now, 
once we obtain this hash value it is not possible to obtain back the original plain text it should not be possible to obtain back the original plain text now hence we say that hashing is one way and there is no concept of dehashing or getting back the original plain text from the hash now the takeaway from this slide is that encryption involves key and hashing does not involve key and over here another takeaway is that there is a reverse process for encryption called as decryption whereas the reverse process for hashing does not exist we cannot have a dehashing now moving further why are hash functions important now in cryptography hash functions find applications in what we call as digital signatures and also we use it in message authentication codes and storing passwords now what what are the features or the services provided by hash functions one of the feature provided by hash function is authentication and the second feature that could be provided by hash function is non repudiation but remember hash functions cannot provide confidentiality for confidentiality we need to use encryption and decryption the third okay the third uh, property that we can uh, the third feature that we can uh, um, obtain through hash function uh, is um, non repudiation authentication and also data integrity data integrity is wherein we are able to prove that the message is not altered during transit or transmission of information from source to destination so moving further to our uh, cryptographic hash properties let us see the basic properties of hashing or the hash value now some of the basic properties a uh, hash should possess is it should be deterministic in nature it should be uniform fixed size non invertible collision resistant and it should exhibit avalanche effect so let us see each one of them in detail now what do we mean by deterministic pro property given a hash uh, given an input the hash function should give us an output when i provide the same input the hash function should be able to return me the same hash value now over here we have taken an instance wherein i have provided an input and all the three inputs remain same it is a fox i'm providing it to the cryptographic hash function for the first time i get the hash which starts with dpcd and then for the, for the second time when i provide the same input still i'm able to get the same digest and for the third time i'm still able to get the same digest for the when i perform the cryptographic hashing now that is for any given input it must return the same output value or the output hash now from the deterministic property let's see what we mean by uniform property uniform property refers to the fact that the input that is given all the bits of the input should influence the output not just few bits of the input input should be able to influence the hash value but all the input bits should be able to influence the output so this property we call it as uniform property of hashing over here for the first instance let's just take the first instance there are three bits over here or three characters over here all the three characters must influence the digest that is obtained or the hash value that is obtained that is what we mean by uniform property moving further let us see what we mean by fixed sized property hash function should be able to turn any arbitrary length input to a fixed sized So over here we can see it is just three character input which is giving us this particular digest now whatever be the size of the input it should be able to give me fixed sized output 
or the fixed sized hash. Now let's see further what we mean by non-invertible property. The non-invertible property is also called as one-way hash function or prime edge resistance. Now let's look at this example. We have an input that is given to the hash function algorithm and we obtain a hash. Now once this hash is obtained, when I give it back to the hash function, when I give the hash value to the hash function algorithm, I should not be able to obtain back the output. Okay. Now let's see over here. Given a hash value y, it is computationally infeasible to find an input x such that h of x is y. Now over here in this second uh, figure, you can see that there is a y that is given to us. Now it should be infeasible to calculate back x from this particular uh, property. Next, weak collision resistance. Now what is collision resistance? Co collision, we have already uh, discussed uh, in the example that we have seen initially that two names will collide and make up to a same hash bucket. Now over here, if two messages, if two messages are able to give me a same hash, in that case, I say that there is a collision that has occurred. Now, in hash, I want a, I want a hash which is in which there won't be any sort of collision. Now, there are two types of collision resistance properties that a hash should possess. One we call it as the collision resistance property, and the other one we call it as strong collision resistant property. Now let's see what we mean by weak collision resistant property. Given the input value x1, it is computationally infeasible to find another input value x2 such that both their hashes are equal. Okay. Over here in this diagram, we can understand that I am given x1 and also for this x1, I know how to calculate h of x1. So let me say this is h of x1. Now, I need to find another in x2, which will also give me a value h of x2, which is equal to h of x1. So this calculation should not be possible according to weak collision resistant property. Next we have strong collision resistant property. In case of strong collision re resistant property, it should be computationally infeasible to find two input values x1 and x2 such that their hashes of x2. In the previous case, we are given x1 and we have to find x2. And in that is in the weak collision resistant property. In case of strong collision resistant property, we are not given either x1 or x2. Our work is to find out x two strings x1 and x2 in such a way that h of x1 and h of x2 match. This is not uh, feasible. Now, in such a, uh, these properties are expected from hash. The last property expected from hash is an avalanche effect. So, what do we mean by this avalanche effect? Now, looking at this, in, when we look at this figure, sorry, when we look at this figure over here we see that we have input and we have output in case of input we are providing four zeros for one case and for the second case we are providing three zeros followed by one only one value or one bit is flipped in the second input or the second case now for this for this 
function for. When I provide a hash function, I get this particular output, hash value. And similarly, with one bit, like provide this input to the hash function, I get this particular you can see that few of the bits are also inverted in the output. Okay. Now over here, let us read this. If a single bit in the input string is flipped, that is zero is flipped one, and each bit of the hash value is flipped with probability roughly equal to point. Now the possibility of four getting flipped is 50%. It could be flipped or it could not be flipped. So similarly, all the bits of the output they have probability to be flipped by 15%. Now we will take this example. For this particular digest values that have been flipped just with one bit change for the input. Moving further, let us just check the attack complexity for weak collision resistance. The question here that arises is how long would it take to find it hash to the given value? If you remember, now the hash value is so the total number of possible hash values. Is to trace to the value. Now we have to this matching the updated hash value. If they do not repeat the process, and again, the end of the string, quit its hash value, detect it. Now it is raised to W. As you may think that in each string, will you likely all of these two hash values? If I need to find a map. From now the brute force. Let's see the attack complexity from collision resistance. But I 
was such why is divided into in your the 
Blockland B and N one the block size and double the width of the size. Here he is standing the diagram in a section. It accepts a predefined station so that it accepts. The in subsequent iterations, a part of the hash of back as second in the compression box. And this block of the here, if you see this, for the first iteration, I am from B2 to the compression function. function box that we are able to process. Now over here for the time M as the for of the assets. Transfer hash one 
secure hash algorithm and one present the first version of the code. And this sharp algorithm produces a hash of 160 bits. Now over here for this, you can see here, we provide an input of 512 bits. If the input is not a 512 bits, the initialization vector is of is 512 bits. We add it and we provide it. And then we com compress or we provide the hash function uh, algorithm in order to obtain a hash of 160 bits. And this uh, output will form the input for subsequent bits. Now this is a bird's eye view of the, of the diagram that we have seen just previously. Now, the main purpose of using hash is to convert an arbitrary sized input into a fixed size output. Now, let us try to recall the symmetric key algorithms. In that, we have something called as key scheduling. Okay, for each round of the algorithm, these are sub keys. Key not key one, key two, so on. All the rounds. The purpose of each scheduling is to the is sub are you is rounds round zero round up to round seventy-nine. Since I think in the beginning of the session does and provided the rounds. Now each the initial transition vector is divided into thirty two bits and each of these we call it the The hash now the secure hash algorithm. We will see how this entire and in one sixty bit T, D, E, and so on. For each round, we use. Okay. Ah. Has four stages. Stages 
round 20 to round 39 is the second stage and the third one Concluding session. Sister Saif. So let's have a three in what we can buy process of which involve conversion of a properties. The property is one and the collision resistance. How can it was a group force attack has been discussed. So finally, we started off with the cryptographic hash construction, wherein we have seen Merkel and Damgaard's compression function in order to generate a hash value. This is an iterative process that is used to generate hash. Now, based on the which uses arbitrary size input in order to give us an output of 160 bit hash. Now, in SHA, we have seen that uh, it makes use of um, 80 rounds in order to opt, or it runs the input 80 rounds in order to obtain a hash of 160 bits. So in the subsequent class or the subsequent session, we will see exact construction of secure hash algorithm and how we can relate it to the fiscal cycle. Thank you for today.